When the month of Ramadan comes, the doors, the gates of paradise are opened. In one narration, the Prophet said, Futihat Abwaab Rahman, the doors of mercy are opened, uh, and the gates of hellfire are shut. The devils are chained away, the devils are locked away. The first part of this is the technical part, which is that if all of the devils are locked up, why is it that we still have issues? Why do we still sin? Why do we still get into it with one another? Why do we still feel temptation? Why do we still hear whispers? Why is it that we still end up in the same situations? And in some situations, you know, we feel uh, even worse, right? When Ramadan comes around, we might, some people would actually say that I'm, I'm feeling depressed because I'm not able to reach the goals that I had and I still feel distant from Allah and we're already one week in Ramadan and I don't know what's going to happen. So why is there still an, an issue or why do we still sin and why do we still have the same issues in many situations that we had before Ramadan? Uh, the second technical part of this is, are all of the shayateen locked away or are some of them locked away? And so there's a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, another narration of Tirmidhi where the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that maradat al that the uh, the big devils, meaning uh, in the hierarchy of shayateen, in the hierarchy of devils, there are those that command the smaller shayateen, the smaller devils to go out and to attack the people. And it is the big shayateen that are locked away. And the small shayateen, including the qareen, including the one who whispers to every one of us individually, those are still there. So your qareen that, that the Prophet ﷺ talked about that is with you is still there. But the big shayateen that command them and that move things forward constantly and try their best to dissuade the people from acts of worship, to sway them towards acts of disobedience, those are the ones that are locked away. So the big shayateen are locked away, the small ones are still there. And some of the scholars said, in fact, all of them are locked away, right? But again, that hadith of the Prophet ﷺ seems to indicate that it's only a set of devils that are locked away, a set of shayateen that are locked away. What are the implications of this hadith though for us? And how do we actually keep our shayateen locked away, our devils locked away for good? Not just in the month of Ramadan, but after the month of Ramadan. The first thing that we should reflect upon is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that the only thing that the devils can do is they can whisper. They put ideas, they tempt, they try to cause us to not just disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but to be distracted from doing the good deeds of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions that the shayateen uh, do not have any sultan, they don't have any control over you, except for those that willingly follow them. And so in all situations, in all situations, the shayateen do not, the devils do not control anyone. They don't have ownership of you. The only thing that they can do is whisper. And it's your choice whether or not you entertain their temptations and entertain their whispers and allow yourself to go down that path, okay? So it's your choice whether or not you give them that access to your heart and that access to your thoughts that they constantly seek throughout the day and throughout the night, okay? So that's, that's the first thing. They are capable of waswas, they're capable of whispering. They don't have control over you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us that the self commands evil as well. The self commands evil as well. And this is really important here because when the Prophet ﷺ talked about dhikr, when he talks about remembrance as a fortress uh, that the devil cannot penetrate, you know, one part of that, one aspect of that, the obvious implication of that is that dhikr, is that re uh, remembrance repels the shayateen away from you. But the other part of that is that if a person is busy with the remembrance of Allah, how are they going to be tempted by the whispers of shaytan? The person is too occupied with something beneficial to be tempted to something that is so vain, so lowly, and calls them to something of no purpose. And so there's a, there, there's a connection between the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the whispers of shaytan. And if you are busy with good, shaytan cannot busy you with evil. Okay, shaytan cannot busy you with evil. And so you have to ask yourself, just as dhikr fills a void in the heart, remembrance fills a void in the heart. Remembrance to the heart is, as some of the great scholars mentioned, is like oxygen, right? It's our spiritual oxygen. Dhikr is our spiritual oxygen. When a person is pumping out the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of God, there is no room for the shaytan to find himself in there to, to, to dissuade you there. 
And so some of the scholars commented on this and they built upon this and they said one of the benefits of this is that if you think about the, the, the things that shaitan penetrates in your life, he penetrates your thoughts, he penetrates your deeds, he penetrates your good, he penetrates your social interactions, he penetrates your wealth, he penetrates all of these different things. What you have to ask yourself is how much of that, how much of an opening are you giving to him in the first place to be able to find that, that room to start to twist and start to turn and start to uh, dissuade you and misguide you away from your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's an important point that if you take the analogy of dhikr to the heart and apply it to everything else. So how do you box the shaitan out? When you think about your social interactions, the Prophet ﷺ taught us to have niya, to have a sense of intention with everything that they do. When you are making your friendships in the first place, when you are developing your social circles, on what basis are those social circles being developed? And if you, you know, just think about if you walk into a meeting and you don't have an agenda, uh, how, how distracted you're gonna be, how far away you're going to go from the actual objectives that are necessary to be fulfilled. And so what is your agenda for everything that you do? And so if the agenda for the heart is to pump dhikr in the spiritual sense, to pump the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then where is the shaitan going to be able to insert those seeds? And some of the scholars said that this is what Allah is, or what the Prophet of Allah is referring to in the hadith where he says, Sufi that the shayateen, that the devils are minimized in their influence. Why? Think about it. Uh, dhikr, remembrance of Allah, and the Qur'an is the greatest dhikr. Quran is referred to as a dhikr It is the greatest remembrance. The remembrance of Allah sends the devils fleeing from your home. People that that uh, that typically would commit sins outside of Ramadan. And it's important for you to think about, you know, when when you commit sins uh, inside of Ramadan or when you commit sins outside of Ramadan. You know, you've got people that uh, that will forsake a sin throughout the entire month of Ramadan, but then as soon as Ramadan's over, go back to it. And then they'll claim that it's just too much for me, I can't get away from this sin. But you just prove that you can get away from it. And so, you know, if the guilt of Ramadan or the weight of the virtue of Ramadan, as is the case for many people that, you know what, I'm not gonna do this right now because it's Ramadan. Even though it should be, I'm not gonna do this because it's Allah, right? But I'm not gonna do this because it's Ramadan. Shaitan's hopeless that, okay, well, I, I can't sway this person this way because they've already decided I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to listen to this. I'm not going to look at this. I'm not. They've already decided that while they're fasting, they're not going to do these things. So they have no room to penetrate there. Sadaqah, you know, shuts the mouths. Charity shuts the mouths of the devils. It's like, it's like stuffing the mouths of the devils with dirt because every time you are called to sadaqah, we know the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu the mouths of those shayateen open, thousands of them, those devils, and say, don't give, don't give, don't give, worry about your material, worry about your material, and you're stuffing their mouths when you give sadaqah. And think about how many, how many times the shayateen get punched in the face in Ramadan with all of the charity that's given in the month of Ramadan, right? It is the month, it is shahr was sadaqah, the month of sadaqah. So where's the shaytan gonna find any room with all of this good that's going on. So it's the environment of good that many of the ulama mentioned, that the shayateen find themselves locked out, that they find that, they're, that they cannot penetrate the spaces that they're usually able to penetrate. Now, of course, Allah in His mercy uh, limits their influence. He, he, uh, he shackles them in a way that allows us to get ahead, that allows us to propel ourselves forward to make those strides towards Allah that we've been called to make throughout the year. But at the end of the day, it comes back to you. Uh, you know, if you look at the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he's talking about Ramadan, uh, he talks about Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the end result, the end result. So for example, when you finish a complete Ramadan, may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala allow us to complete this Ramadan with mercy and with worship at the end of Ramadan, your place in Jannah is guaranteed for you, right? And you're written down from al-utaqa, you're written down from those that are freed from the punishment of Jahannam, right? It's written down for you at the end of Ramadan that this, that this person has completed this period. They just spent the last 10 nights of Ramadan, may Allah allow us to witness them, saying, Allahumma innaka afu wa tuhibbul afu fa'fu anni. Oh Allah, you are the one who forgives, you love to forgive, so forgive me. They just finished it and so Allah writes it all down for them that the shayateen that used to bother you with certain sins, that used to be able to find access to you with certain sins, are locked up for good post Ramadan because you've repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you said, I'm not going back to those sins. You've made a firm determination to not go back to those sins. And so it's like the shayateen are put away 
just as you're being recorded amongst the people of paradise at the end of Ramadan, like you have finished that beautiful period of fasting, that beautiful period of worship, you have finished that beautiful period of immersing yourself in Allah's mercy, you have engaged the Qur'an, you've engaged prayer, you cried in supplication, you are written now at the end of this period amongst uh, the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. The shayateen are locked up and put away. This is a person that I'm not going to be able to get to anymore because they're not going to give me access. They're not going to give me access. I don't have a way to get back to that person because that person has put in the controls in Ramadan in the midst of their repentance to where they will not let me back in. And so you want to give shaytan a life sentence, right? You don't just want to give him a month sentence. You want to give him a life sentence. Is it possible that Allah describes the shaytan in two seemingly conflicting ways? Al-Waswas is the one who whispers, Khannas is the one who sinks away. The shayateen can be locked up in Ramadan, you want to drown them to death, right? So Khannas is literally someone who sinks, who drowns, they're gone. They cannot, not in the literal sense, but in the way they can't affect you, they cannot uh, ruin you because you've decided to, to, to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your dhikr is forming a fortress. Your remembrance is forming a fortress. Allah refers to the Qur'an as dhikr. Allah refers to salah as dhikr, to the prayer as dhikr, as remembrance. What are the fortresses that you're building in your life right now to give shaitan a life sentence so that he will never be able to come back to you with the power and the access that he had before and his power and access was already merely of one of temptation, merely of one of whispering and he's not going to be able to have that or, or he will not be able to have that to the same effect and impact if you sentence him by your actions and by your setting up those fortresses the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the ability to uh, so that he may not be able to penetrate once again. And so the greatest thing that you come out of Ramadan is not that shaitan was put away for a month only to come back at you, you know, uh, uh, viciously, right? Only to come back at you with a vengeance. But in our own individual lives, how do I lock him out? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to hold him back for a month just to release him like a wild dog on me after Ramadan. Allah is giving you an opportunity to put him away for good. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.